set that marker again. Welcome to Night Space Academy. In today's lesson, we're going to be starting with the very, very basics of flight planning on FS Charter. So this is uh, certainly not intended to be a comprehensive uh, lesson on flight planning. This is to kind of get you by, get started with how to select flights, how to select your jobs, and set up the uh, set up the FS Charter job, and plan your flight so you can get from point A to point B with a reasonable assumption that you'll have everything you need. So there's a few tools that we'll be using. These are not by the only tools available. These are just the tools that I've learned about and use uh, currently. And you can use what works for you, but this is just going to provide sort of the basics. So when we first load into the FS Charter interface, we're going to go to the Marketplace tab over here, and we're going to filter by the airplane that we, we want to be flying. Now, personally, I've been flying the Beechcraft King Air 350, and so that's the aircraft that I'm flying. I do recommend that you choose a type rating, uh, or one of these type ratings to start with, and that will be kind of, you want to focus on one of these type ratings initially to get your uh, rating built up, because that's how you'll get uh, your cash flow really starting to flow in as you get rolling. So we'll hit apply there, and we'll zoom in a little bit so we can see the routes that we're looking at here. So I've already looked at uh, kind of pre-scouted routes. What, the way I choose routes currently is I'm looking at the routes filtered by their, their pay. Oh, and my friend uh, True North Airways just had a plane open up, it seems. Um, we may change what we're flying now, because I think the, uh, this, is, this will be a fun route anyway. So I'm, after sorting by the uh, pay, I kind of skim through here and look for routes that are in the range that I'm looking for to fly. So most of the time I'm uh, with streams, I'm looking for anywhere from two and a half to three and a half hour flights, give or take a little bit. So this 550 nautical mile flight for, um, or this 500 nautical mile flight from Anchorage to Juneau is about the right neighborhood and it pays pretty well. So that's kind of the balance that I'm looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this one. So we can see we've got a route here. What we're gonna start with here is we're gonna put that into Sky Vector. So we're gonna start with Anchorage going to Janao. And that kind of gives us a rough idea of what we're looking at. We can scout for terrain, things like that. So you can see what sort of altitudes that you're gonna need, routing that you're gonna um, wanna have in mind, and gives a kind of an overview of what we're looking at. Now I you can certainly use flight, uh, Sky Vector for fully planning your flights. I'm currently using Sky Brief for that purpose, or SimBrief rather. And what we're going to do here, no, we're not going to generate a flight. We're going to do a new flight. And in SimBrief, we're going to go Anchorage to Janao. Um, we do have to type the uh, ICAO codes correctly. And of course, this is not going to be the perfect setup here, but it should be close enough. Um, I have a King Air 350 already set up. The, there is a 350 in the list, and it's pretty close to how the Airfoil Labs King Air flies in X-Plane. Um, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. So this gives me just the defaults here are going to give me uh, a default fuel factor, which is going to match the airplane's base performance, max cruise speed for anything under about uh, 600 miles or so, that's going to be sufficient, and normal descent profile is the only one we can select. Um, but we do, we do have a max range option for our cruise profile, which we can use to get further along if we need, to, uh, need a longer route. We go slower, but we get further along. It's also going to choose a default routing for me based on the departure runway and the arrival runway that are selected. Um, these are not necessarily the runways that are going to be in use in the real world. Um, and you can always change these to match what you would like to do. 
In this particular case, this is where Sky Vector can come in handy. As you can look and say, oh yeah, I would much rather make this approach to runway 8 from over the water, where everything's nice and low, rather than trying to deal with all of the mountains and everything else that are going to be at play, making their approach the other direction. So we're going to go ahead and, now that we have all this filled in, we're going to hit the Generate Flight. This is going to generate a briefing package that gives us an overview of what our flight's going to look like. Now there's a few things that we're looking for in particular. I'm going to hit that to go ahead and download the uh, routing. Main thing that we're looking for on this part is the block fuel. So this is how much fuel we need to have loaded on the airplane in order to make the climb, uh, the flight over between those two airports, descend, land, and have fuel to make it to our alternate, and have our reserve fuel. And all of that detail is located in this planned fuel section right here. We can certainly go for less fuel than this. We want to have at least the trip fuel plus a little bit of extra. But I've been planning or been running these with kind of the full operational fueling in mind. So I'm going to be using this 1421 kilograms of fuel as my fuel load for this route. So we'll take that fuel loading, we'll go back over to FS Charter, we're going to configure this flight, select the King Air, we're going to paste our fuel load, if we can get, the, uh, get everything to cooperate here. There we go. Now for the cargo, this is one thing that is kind of important with FS Charter. The cargo loading here is based on what the aircraft is configured as, and this does not represent what the airplane in the simulator can actually do. So in this particular case, for the Airfoil Labs uh, King Air 350, I happen to know that we can take 11 passengers and about 400, there's me hitting the wrong button again, 400 kilograms of cargo and have room for our fuel. Now, depending on the load, uh, on the uh, fuel load, we may need to take less cargo, but that's kind of what we're aiming for. And you can see this adjusts our total pay as a side effect. We're going to hit next. I'm only going to select the one way. Depending on what you're doing, you can select both directions or only one way. And per Sky, uh, FS Charter, we're expected to take a little over two hours on this flight. Now, let's see what SimBrief says on that. Simbrief is saying an hour and 48 in flight, so probably in that general neighborhood. We can go ahead and hit accept job, and when we hit view now, we can see what this job is configured as. So now when we go over to the simulator, I've already got the aircraft loaded in uh, at Anchorage, and we could hit the begin job button right now, but that would cause us problems. Some aircraft, um, especially payware aircraft like the Airfoil Labs King Air, have some, diff uh, some interesting things with some of the uh, plugins that they use that you have to be aware of. For this particular aircraft, we have to make sure that we remove the chocks and the tie downs before we hit the begin job. Otherwise, at the FS Charter plugin, we'll not be able to teleport us to the beginning point and we have trouble and it gets to be annoying and yeah, you know, that's just something to be aware of. So we'll hit begin job. Apparently the last person left us on the runway. That's cool. Um, I don't know why they left us on the runway. Not even at the end of the runway either. We are in the middle of a runway. <laughs> um, cool. So this can happen with FS Charter. Sometimes you do end up with awkward placing of where your uh, where the last flight was left. Um, that that's something that may change in future updates. Just you know, when it happens, don't worry too much about it. Just make sure if you are flying with online air, air, uh, online air traffic control, make sure that you get off the runway before you connect to your online ATC, so that you're not uh, loading right in the middle of stuff. So. 
things to be aware of, but uh, that should be pretty much all you need to do to worry about. Oh, I guess one other thing here. When you hit that, uh, when you set the parking brake here, we'll go ahead and set the parking brake, the plug-in for FS Charter is going to try to load the plane. Depending on the aircraft that you are flying, it may or may not be able to do that fully automatically. Keep an eye out in this text. It may say, hey, you need more cargo, you, may need, you have too much, whatever the case may be. For the Airfoil Labs King Air, we'll open the weight and balance window, and you can make those adjustments here. Um, this is saying that I'm... Oh, that's... Did I ever change that? I did. Let's see if we can tweak this down a little bit. Because otherwise we are going to be taking off really heavy. And I don't know how far down we can actually go. So here it's saying we currently have 2,400 pounds of cargo and we need 2,700. Which is weird because I didn't change the baggage by that much. Apparently, 10 is too low. But 50 kilograms in baggage is enough. Is 30 enough? No. So basically, you just tweak the, your uh, loading until it fits. Um, we are a little bit heavy for our max ramp weight. By the time we get done taxing around and everything, we should be fine. Uh, so we can go ahead and close that window and we're ready to start up the plane and take off.